there is something satisfying about watching oddly shaped gears in action. Let's look at one such gear today. We will start by looking at the assembly of one such contraption and then we'll follow it up with the second one. A logarithmic spiral is a curve whose distance from the origin grows exponentially with the angle. The curve can be found in nature like the Nautilus shell. I recently came across a gear whose profile matches the above description and is called a Nautilus gear. The way two such gears mesh with each other is really mesmerizing. I printed one for myself to play with but was too lazy to keep turning it. So I automated the motion and now use it as a desk toy. This is a two-part series on kinetic sculptures based on Nautilus gears. In this part, we are going to look at two such contraptions. And in the next part, we are going to look at a few more of these sculptures. I started out with a goal to figure out a mechanism to turn the gears. Well, of course a motor. But then there were two issues. Number one, how do I hold the Nautilus gears in place while turning? Number two, how do I drive the gears with the motor at a reasonable speed, that is, neither too fast nor too slow? The answer to the first question was rather simple. Design a frame to hold the gears. The answer to the second question is also quite straightforward in retrospect, but it was not immediately clear to me when I started. I knew gears can be used to reduce the speed and increase the torque but did not have much idea beyond that. So I read up on it and started with figuring out the gear ratio that I would need. A reduction by a factor of 10 appeared reasonable given the motor I had. Doing the reduction in a single stage would require a monster sized spur gear. So I decided to do it in two stages, each with a gear down factor of 3. I then modeled the two stages in Fusion 360, which is one of the skills I have picked up from the YouTube School of Engineering. In addition, a few 608 skateboard bearings were used to reduce the friction and eliminate the wobble in gears. I then decided to step it up a notch and experimented with four of these Nautilus gears meshed together and came up with a slightly more interesting movement. By the way, the profile for these gears can simply be generated by some closed form equations and expressions that are longer than this project blog. For the mathematically inclined, there is a link to that in the description. So I did what any sane person would do. I spent a couple of months solving these equations and came up with the coordinates defining the gear profile for these Nautilus gears. Just kidding. I simply picked up the DXF file from Thingiverse and altered it to suit my requirements. I did not feel any need for making any aspect programmable, so no microcontroller or coding for this project. One could introduce a microcontroller and an H-bridge for example to change the direction of rotation or the speed or maybe accessorize it with some lights and control it all wirelessly. But I decided to give it a pass for this one. I decided to mount the Nautilus gears on an epicyclic gear train that is a planetary gear set as it rendered a more industrial looking background. I paired it up with the handle from the Thor hammer project I had done earlier. The initial version had the bottommost Nautilus gear swing sideways rather unpredictably. So I introduced a guide to have it gracefully ride up and down vertically. This made a huge difference in its stability. The second part in this series shows a more generic framework to extend the number of Nautilus gears and get some interesting results. So do check it out. The rest of the video captures the assembly process so do watch it till the end. Alright, I guess that's all for now. Feel free to leave comments if you would like to give me some feedback. Ciao for now. Keep exploring and keep learning.